Hello again and welcome to this new section. Here we are going to learn about classification, which is the other big type of task that we have in supervised learning. Classification models are the most widely used models in predictive analytics, so they are very important. And by the end of this section, you will understand the main ideas behind these models and you will also understand the intuition behind some important models that we have for classification tasks. Let's begin with the outline for this section. First, we will talk about a model called logistic regression, which belongs to the family of linear models for classification. Then, we will talk about classification trees, which are widely used in medical applications and in many business settings, mainly because they are very easy to interpret and easy to explain. Then, we will talk about naive base classifiers and they are important classifiers that belong to a family called probabilistic classifiers and they are very useful mainly when working with text data. Finally, in the last video, we will talk about how to evaluate classification models. So this is mostly a conceptual section. Here we will learn the high level intuition behind these models. I won't go into the mathematical details about them, but you will get enough information about these models so we can use them in the next section with real world data to make predictions about different problems. Okay, so this is the first video in this section and here we talk about logistic regression. First, we will talk about the types of classification tasks that we have. Then, we will talk about the intuition behind the logistic regression model. And finally, I will say a few words about the logistic regression object from Scikit-Learn, which is the object that we use to train these types of models. Okay, just as a brief reminder, a few sections ago, we said that classification tasks are the ones where we are trying to predict categories, or in other words, when the target is a categorical variable. There are three types of classification tasks. The first one is called binary classification, and in this case, we have only two categories in our target. So for every observation, we will predict if this observation belongs to the first category or to the second category. The second type of problem is called multi-class classification, and this is when we have more than two categories for our target. Again, for every observation, we try to predict to which category this observation belongs. The last type of classification task that we have is called multi-label classification and this is when we assign many categories or many labels to a single observation. For example, if you have a news article, we can use these techniques to assign many categories to this one news article so we can make a better description of what the article is about. So for example, we can assign simultaneously the labels uh, world news, international politics, and international economics. So uh, one observation gets many labels. Now, in this course, we are only going to talk about binary classification tasks because uh, first, it will be better for your understanding, and second, these models provide the basis for the other types of classification and it is very easy you can actually use almost the same code to go from binary classification to multi-class classification so in second learn you just have to provide most of the time just an extra argument to the object and then you will go from binary to multi-class classification now multi-label problems are a little bit more complicated and they are out of the scope of this course. Okay, now we know that we will work with binary classification. So there is important terminology that we have to know in binary classification, mainly the positive and the negative class. Since in this setting we have only two categories in our target, 
the first thing that we do in binary classification is to pick one of the categories and to name it positive class. The positive class is associated with the number one in our modeling process and the other class automatically gets uh, the label negative class and we usually associate the number zero. Now, for example, if we are using the text of an email to classify the email as spam or no spam, then the first thing to do is to pick one of the categories and to name this category the positive category. Or another example could be uh, if we are using patient data to predict if the patient is sick or healthy, the first thing we do is to pick one of these two categories and name it the positive category. Now the word positive in this context doesn't mean that this category is good or desirable, it is just a convention that we use, okay? And it doesn't matter which of the two categories you choose to name or to label as the positive one, it doesn't matter. So sometimes it is better to use one over the other, but from the mathematics of the model or from the prediction standpoint, it doesn't matter. Okay, before talking specifically about logistic regression, let me tell you about what these type of classifiers try to do. So logistic regression can be considered as a probability-based classifier and all of these classifiers, and in fact, the three uh, models that we will see are into this category. So what this classifier, the general goal of these classifiers is to use the features to estimate the probability of observing the positive class. Then use these probabilities to predict if the observations belong to the positive or to the negative class. So in general, this is what these models do. They use the features, they predict probabilities from these features, and then we use these probabilities to predict if the observations will go to the positive class or to the negative class. Now, how logistic regression does it? So this is the general formulation of the logistic regression model. So to get the probability, of the target being equal to one, or this is another way to say of the target being in the positive class, we use this formula, one over one plus e to the negative z, where z is defined as we see in this equation. So as you can see, it's just a linear combination of the features and the weights. So we have one weight plus one weight times the first feature plus the second weight times the second feature and so on. So this is the general formulation of the logistic regression model. And there are many algorithms to try to find the weights. Now, what all the algorithms do is to try to find the best set of weights so that the model produces the best possible predictions. Okay, so to give you a more concrete idea about how this model works, let's go to a Jupyter notebook that I prepared with a little example. Okay, so here we are in this notebook. Now, uh, the code here is not important. What is important is the general idea. So here I will build a very simple model to predict if a customer will default or will pay in the next month on its credit card. So uh, we have two classes, default or pay, and I will pick the default as the positive class. So I will assign one to the customers that defaulted and zero to the customers that pay. And then I will use two features to predict if a customer will default or will pay. In this case, I will use only the limit balance. Okay, here we are in the Jupyter Notebook and uh, here in this little example, the code is not important. What I want you to have is just uh, a more concrete idea of what's going on with logistic regression. So here I have some data about credit card payment or default. So the target in this case is the customer can either default on his or her payment or the customer can pay. So I have two categories, default and pay. 
and I will pick the default category as the positive class. So uh, all customers that uh, defaulted will get one and all customers that paid will get zero. So I will try to predict, I will use a logistic regression model to predict if the customer will default. And I will use just two features for this uh, very simple example, limit balance and age. Okay, so here are the two equations that I showed you in the presentation. So the probability of the customer defaulting is calculated like this. NZ comes from one weight plus another weight times the first feature, which in this case is limit balance, plus a second weight times the second feature, which in this case is age. Now, the code is not important here. What is important is that after training, I get a set of coefficients. Now, you can see here, this is W0, this is W1, and this is W2. So, now I have an equation to estimate the probability that a particular customer will default. So, what I do here is that I get Z from this calculation. So, this is W0, this comes from here, this is W1, and this is W2, okay? So then here I just wrote uh, this as Python functions, these two equations as Python functions, and then I can give any two values for these two features that I used and get the probability that a particular customer with these features will default. So for example, uh, if I have a, balance, a limit balance of 2.0 and an age of 40, the probability that the model calculates for this customer uh, of defaulting is 0 0.239. Okay, so this is how this logistic regression model works. Okay, a few words about the interpretation of weights. So if you get positive weights, they are associated with a higher probability of observing the positive class. And negative weights are associated with lower probability of observing the positive class. And remember that what we get from these models are probabilities. Now we can use these probabilities to assign an observation to the positive or to the negative class. And usually, or the default threshold that is used is 0 0.5. So if you get a probability equal or greater than 0 0.5, you will predict that this observation belongs to the positive class. Now this can be modified and we will see in the examples how we can modify and the reasons why we can modify this threshold. Now a few words about the object that we use in scikit-learn to estimate these types of models. So in scikit-learn we used the logistic regression estimator object and this comes from the linear models sub-module in scikit-learn. Now uh, one interesting thing about this object is that it performs automatic regularization so we can control the regularization with the C parameter which is uh, called the inverse regularization strength. So basically, if you want more regularization, you use larger values for Z. So in the case, if you have many, many, many features, it will be a good idea to use a value of Z, maybe uh, of 100 or uh, 1000. Uh, but this really depends on your particular application. Another Interesting thing about this object is that you can get the weight for all the features with the coef underscore attribute. So just as we did in the example, we got the coefficients for the feature using this attribute. And you can get the first coefficient, also known as W0, with the intercept underscore attribute. Okay, so in this video, we learned about the intuition behind the logistic regression model.